already decided to call me and kick me off of my last live session. So we're starting a new one. Let's see if anyone realizes to come over to this uh, video. Usually when this happens, people just stay on the other one that's just getting a spinning wheel of death and I'm not on there. So let's see if we're able to get people from that one. Hey, everybody's back. Hello, everyone. Let's give everyone a second to come back over here. Hey, D, what's up, Jordan? All right, so I just got kicked off of my other one um, because Laura called me in the middle of it, even though she lives in the house and was five seconds away from me. She decided to call and kick me off. So we're starting all over again. We're gonna give everyone a second to move from the old stream to the new stream. Um, we only have 32 people in here now. We had like 200, I think, 200 and something. So we'll start over. Laura's probably on this now to see if I'm gonna bash her, which I already did. I don't know why she would call me when she lives in the same house as me, but. Anyways, I'm over it now. Not only did I, not only did she call to kick me off the stream, she also then kicked me out of the living room and sent me to the office. So uh, if we had a dog kennel here, I'd probably be streaming from in there. But luckily for me, we don't have one. So I got to come to the office. All right, you Darvish is nasty. Mac Coyle, thank you so much for the super chat, Matt. Do hitting coaches have a dramatic effect on professional hitters? The Yankees completely lose their ability to hit this year. Makes me curious. So I do think there's such thing as good hitting coaches and not so good hitting coaches. Um, I think I think a lot of times when a team doesn't do well and everyone goes after the hitting coach, like I think that might be a little overrated. Um, so it depends. I mean, I've hit the best in my life sometimes when, uh, oh, very funny, Lara. Uh, I've hit the best in my life sometimes for hitting coaches that don't say anything. And that works great if I'm feeling really good. Now, if I'm struggling, I, I sometimes need a hitting coach that can help me um, get back to hitting again. So it, it really does depend. Uh, am I keeping up with a 90 mile an hour share? Yes, I am keeping up with it. I've been working out. I worked out today, worked out yesterday. I was actually away for the last four days. Uh, we had a tournament in Delaware that I was away at. So uh, I wasn't able to make any videos on it while I was away. Um, but I have been keeping up with working out. Nick Franks, thank you so much for the super chat, Nick. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Why do most top prospects go to double A instead of triple A? Well, some guys will get called up from double A. Um, but a lot of guys go to triple A as well. Triple A is a little bit more of just an older league. It's more veteran guys. It's, um, you know, sometimes they'll call you right up from double A. But um, yeah, they're just, double A is just a younger league typically. Um, Cannon, Stowe, how can we get the game back to small ball? Tired of bombs and stragglers. I think the game needs to go back to more doubles and triples. Uh, the game isn't going back to small ball. I don't think you're ever going to see a time, at least, I don't think you're going to see a time, at least for maybe a real, real, real long time. I don't know, sometimes things come back in the style, but you're not going to see the game go back to like, I don't think the type of small ball that you saw a long time ago before roids really got into the game. So uh, I don't think that, I think the strikeouts are here for a long time because the pitchers are so much better now than they were before. Now that's not saying that they weren't good pitchers before. That's just, I'm just saying the amount of pitchers that are really good, that are throwing really hard, that have great breaking stuff, that have strikeout stuff, um, the amount of relievers that are used, like it's just hard to hit. Um, so could we go back to seeing a little bit more balls put in play at, uh, at some point? Yes, but I don't know if we're ever going to go really back to small ball. I think small ball started, like, when you think about small ball way back in the day, right? They used to use, like I heard today watching the Red Sox game that in 1912, they used one baseball for the whole game. Think about that baseball. That baseball was probably like hitting a rock. The ball probably didn't go anywhere. 
right? And so you couldn't drive the ball as much. And so like, what did you do? I mean, the parks were big and the ball didn't go anywhere and the bats were like telephone poles, like they played small ball, they bunt the ball, you know, you score a couple runs here and there. The game is different now. Like the game, the ball is livelier, the small, the parks are smaller, the hitters are bigger. So it doesn't make as much sense to play for one run when you can hit a home run, you know, and score one run or many runs right there. So um, I think that that is the better way to score runs. Now, the pitching is so good that people are going to say, well, if we just went back to small ball, we'd score more runs. I'm not so sure about that. You'd, you'd cut down on strikeouts, but I don't know if you'd score more runs. I think if you scored more, I, for me, I think teams, if they felt they would score more runs by putting a team together that could play small ball, I think they would. Um, but I don't think they feel that way. Will they feel that way at some point? Maybe. I don't know. But EDG Disc Golf. I missed your, I missed your uh, live, your um, super chat. Put another, put it in here. You don't have to put, don't uh, send the super chat. Just put the question in here and I'll see if I can see it. Mark Dice? I don't think so. Laura might go to prom with you if you ask her. That's right, Nick Frank. I did say your name. Question, Matt. Where does the money go from the stream? Are you earning some of that money? Um, Laura takes it all, usually. I'm just kidding. Um, anything earned through this YouTube channel? basically goes to our Antelon baseball program. So goes towards, you know, baseballs and maybe I buy a new pitching machine or, um, you know, all that stuff. Mike Ekstrom. Yeah, Mike Ekstrom. What about Mike Ekstrom? I played with him. Brian, thank you so much for Super Chat. I'm used to that because in, in travel baseball that I coach, that's how we, a lot of times we'll start extra innings. Sometimes they start with bases loaded. So I'm used to it. You know, I know it feels weird in the big leagues, but I was not a fan of playing like 22 inning games. So, um, you know, I didn't think that they had to start with a man on second. I said, why not just put a cap and say, hey, listen, we're only going to play 12 innings. And if we don't have a winner by 12 innings, it doesn't have to be 12 innings. It can be any amount of innings. Just name the inning and say, okay, if we don't have a winner by then, the game's over. So, um, but overall, I'm fine with it. Drag bunting a runner home with less than two outs. Ford or against it? Uh, yeah, Ford. I mean, what, however you can score a run. <laughs> I don't care how you score a run. You score a run and score it. Matt, you played in San Antonio. You playing experience there. Remember the Roundhawks? The, ro the Roundhawks. The Rockhounds. Um, I do remember the Rockhounds. That was the um, Rockhounds uniforms were blue and they were in... Um, why am I having a mental block? What part of Texas was that? The Rockhounds. I remember that though. That's actually where I made my, my double-A debut was against the Rockhounds. I started the game off two for two. Then I, I got picked off a second. Uh, would you like to... Uh, EJ Slam, thank you for the super chat. Would you like to see more turf fields? Is there much of a difference between turf and grass in baseball or in football? Yeah, there's a big difference. Um, I like turf fields. Turf fields will definitely wear in your body more. My first year playing on turf fields, my back would hurt all the time. It's definitely not as good on the body. Um, easier to, you know, you're not going to have as many rainouts, uh, so maintenance on the field is a lot easier. Uh, fielding on the field is usually easier because you're not going to get, you know, there's no lips and there's, you know, the ball doesn't take bad hops really on the turf. You just got to get used to fielding on it because it's a little bit different, but Lara needs money to paint. That's true. Matt, how is your investor profile? Um, doing pretty well, although over the last five to 10 years, I think pretty much a monkey could, uh, could have picked pretty good investor profile for your portfolio. So my biggest holding is Apple. I've had that for like 15 years almost. Uh, second biggest is Tesla. And then after that, it's a bunch of, a bunch of different uh, stocks. How's the basement coming along? We're still waiting for paint. <laughs> That's where we're stuck at right now. Paint. Paint is coming soon. Evan, thank you so much for Super Chat. Come on, Matt. Got to start earning some of that money. Should I use that heckle <laughs> this summer at a South Bend Cubs game? Not necessarily at a mat. Yes, I think you should. I think the first at-bat you see, go for it. 
Just make sure that whoever you say it to is like someone that got drafted high. You don't want to say it to any random guy because guy's going to be like, you know, some of the guys are getting paid like eight bucks a game, you know? So it's not much money to earn. Matthew by Lucky, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Midland, that's who it is. Midland Rock Hounds. That's right. I remember that, Scott. What's up, man? What's up, man? Why don't you play anymore? Because I'm old. I stink. <laughs> Drills for catchers. Uh, go to our catching uh, playlist. I have a, uh, some drills on there that we use with our catchers. Do chicks dig the long ball? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Matt, can baseball players actually see the spin on the ball as they claim? It seems almost impossible. Are they reacting to the arm speed and simply believing they can see spin? No, you can see spin. There's no doubt about it. Um, where's the baseball that I had? All right, so when this ball comes in, when they say they see spin, it's not that you see the laces. You're like, oh, there are the laces. But when the ball spins really fast, I can't spin it fast enough. But you notice a certain rotate, like... So a four-seam fastball looks a certain way to your eyes. Um, a two-seam fastball looks a different to your eyes. Um, a, a, a breaking ball looks different than your, to your eyes. A slider, you'll sometimes see there's like this little dot coming in. So you definitely see a different spin uh, on the ball. There's no doubt about that. Now, spin isn't the only thing you're recognizing. You're recognizing the way the ball comes out of the hand. So a curveball, the ball pops up a little bit more. A fastball is going to be a little bit straighter out of the hand. So you recognize that. You recognize, um, you know, small subtleties, like how much of the ball you see. By the way, I cut my finger. They got a bandaid on there. So like, um, you know, like a fastball, you're going to see more like a thicker wrist here, thicker wrist. You know, the ball looks like that. And this is coming at you fast. So it's... Um, you know, after you do it thousands and thousands and thousands of times, you start to notice it. If I throw a curveball here, right? See, my wrist got thinner, a lot thinner, a lot skinnier. Some people call it a skinny wrist, right? Ball looks a little bit different. Again, it's coming at you fast, but you start to notice those things, I guess, subtly. Hopefully, I didn't miss any super chats there while I was going through that. I don't know why my phone keeps giving me updates on it. I hate how my phone does. I got to turn that off. My Apple TV, like I'll be recording, say like a Celtics game. And then all of a sudden my, my uh, phone, it'll pop down like Nets versus Celtics in a tight tie game in the fourth quarter. I'm like, I've been filming the game to watch it later. Why are you telling me the score? I didn't ask you. Um, how's the road to 90 going? It's going pretty good. My velocity went down last week, but I'm not so concerned about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with just uh, getting my body back in the shape and my arm back in the shape, and then we'll really get going. How tall was I in ninth grade? Uh, I think basically, excuse me, this size. I was probably pretty much tapped out at, in ninth grade. I think I'm about, I'm, I list myself at 6'1". I'm basically around there. I think technically I'm like six feet and three Four, six feet and three quarter inches is what I think I am officially, but I round up the six one. EDG disc golf. Workouts from my son who is six years old and throws 86. His coach said he's far too advanced for anything he knows. Um, well, for my six year old, what I do is I hang him upside down in his closet um, just to try to stretch him. Uh, I, I'm trying to get him to be six, I'd like six four. Um, and he's getting close to four feet tall right now. So that's what I personally do. You can even put um, like ankle weights, you know, like ankle weight or wrist weights. Wrist weights are fine. Tie him upside down, put wrist weights on his arms. So he's kind of tugging them down like this. And that'll stretch him out a little bit faster for you. If, you know, just hanging them upside down doesn't do enough. You might be able to go maybe like six, four to get, you know, an extra in six, five. It's a big difference. Especially my son's a lefty pitcher. So like, you know, if he ends up being six feet, 
That's, you know, you can find a six footer walking down the street. You can find 20 of them. But if he's sick, if I stretch him out and he's six, five, whew, like you're talking maybe first round. So. Uh, I did announce the winner of the buckler glove. I did. I'm going to do another one soon though. Uh, ever start your home run trot in the ball land and play? Never, because I never did a home run trot unless I absolutely knew I crushed the ball. So, no. Who do you think will win the World Series? Well, um, what was my... Ch I, I did a video, I believe, at the beginning of the season. I think I did. I had the Dodgers winning again just because I thought they were just so outrageously good. And uh, did I pick the White Sox in the AL? Can't remember who I picked in the AL. Maybe I picked the White Sox? And then I picked the Dodgers winning. Never had a chance to play in Japan or KBO, no, I did not. Acuna or Tatis, I mean, I, you can't go wrong either way. I got asked that question on uh, one of the YouTube MLB games when I was in the chat a few weeks ago. I picked Acuna, but um, I mean, you'll be pretty good either way. Why are there no turf fields in the major minor leagues? Um, what are the turf fields in the major leagues? Toronto plays on turf, don't they? Or they did before they had to play in Florida. Um, who else plays on a turf field? Does anyone else play? If you could witness any moment in baseball history live, what would it be? Oh boy, that's a good question. I honestly don't know. I mean, watching Joe Carter go deep to win the World Series would be pretty cool. I mean, we could probably name like 20 different um, live events I'd like to be at. Neil Walker never played with him. And I'm trying to think if I played against him. I may have played against him, I just can't remember. Never thought about playing slow pitch softball, nope. What happened against Washington when you had eight at bats? Well, we went to extra innings and I was just struggling. <laughs> what team has the best manager and what makes a good manager? Your managing is interesting. I think a lot of managing has to do with being a really good communicator at the big league level. It's about being like a really good communicator. You know, does having base, like I feel like most managers are pretty good when it comes to baseball knowledge. Um, you know, I do think some managers do a really good job of, of utilizing their bullpen. Um, although I feel like a lot of the stuff now is starting to come from analytics coming from the front office. And so, um, you know, maybe a little bit less gut and a little bit more numbers, but I still think there is some, you know, gut stuff involved and the manager has to have a, you know, be able to read the pulse of their team, I guess, or have a finger on the pulse of their team. So, but I've always thought a good manager is someone that can communicate really well with the players. It's a long season. You're going to have a lot of ups and downs. Players are going to be up and down emotionally. And, um, you know, so being able to kind of navigate that as a manager is important. Toronto doesn't play on turf. Oh, I thought they did play on turf up in Toronto. They have real grass up in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, Hank Aaron, 715, that would be pretty cool. Antonelli hat anywhere? Uh, we used to sell them online, but honestly, I was, we were selling a lot of them and I was getting tired of running to the post office and mailing them every day. If you go on our website right now, you can get a hat. It won't be our official hat, but if you go to, uh, we have like a, squad locker store on our website you can get hats there i've never gotten a hat off of there it's again it's not our official hat but there they are there are antenna baseball hats up there 
Brian, thank you again for Super Chat. Power pitchers or finesse pitchers? What did you find harder to hit against? Do you think one style is better than the other? I'd rather face a finesse pitcher than a power pitcher. Like, you know, I don't want to face Aroldis Chapman. I know that much. I'll face a finesse pitcher and hope I can hit him. You know, uh, but that's not saying that they're easier to hit. That's just kind of I'd rather hit, you know. I don't want to hit against a guy throwing 103 miles an hour that could hit me in the ribs or in the head, so... Toronto does play on turf. Yeah, I was pretty sure of that. How do I think the Giants will do? Well, the Giants are doing great so far. So, uh, I mean, I would not have expected that coming into the year. So my opinion at this point doesn't really matter because I didn't see that one coming. I don't think I, I think if anyone told you the Giants were going to be this good, then they're clearly a psychic. Uh, Barry Bonds, put him in the Hall of Fame. Thanks, Dusty. If I could play any other position other than second base in the majors, what would it be? Pitcher. I've always thought pitching would be really, really fun. You know, as a pitcher, one thing I didn't like about being a second baseman or really any position other than catcher is that you go games sometimes where you don't do anything. You're just, you're standing out there, pitch after pitch after pitch. You know, that's one thing that aggravated me about baseball and that you only get like four at-bats a game. You know, I, I, I always like, you know, hockey, you're into every play, right? Like basketball, you're touching the ball, you're doing something all the time. And football, you might not be because, you know, you're not going to get the ball all the time. There's a lot of guys out in the field. You know, if you're a running back, I guess you're going to touch the ball a lot. And if you're a quarterback, you get the ball in your hands all the time. But um, baseball sometimes, you know, I don't want to say baseball is boring. I don't think baseball is boring at all. But as a pitcher, as a player, as a position player, sometimes you're out there on defense. You're like, man, this is kind of boring. That's why I like it as a coach, because as a coach, I feel like I'm involved every single play, right? Like every pitch, I'm into it. Favorite pitch to hit? Fastball right down the middle. Toronto switched to grass. Uh, let's see. Osama. Thank you so much for Super Chat. Who had the best infield arm you ever saw? Best infield arm I ever saw. I know who was the best outfield arm I ever saw, but the best infield arm? Well, actually, I take that back. The best infield arm I ever saw was probably Matt Bush. He was a minor leaguer. Now he's a big league pitcher. That's still probably the best arm I ever saw. When I saw him throw the ball across the infield, I was like... That's the best arm I've ever seen. <laughs> it was really, really a good arm. Um, i trying to think of who else stood out. Oh, Manny Machado is probably up there. First time I saw Manny Machado throw, I was like, geez, that's a strong arm. Am I thinking about doing another player interview like I did with Trevor Bauer? Uh, I haven't personally thought about that. I actually didn't set up the Trevor Bauer interview. He set it up. So, you know, I didn't contact him and say, hey, do you want to do it? He contacted me and said, hey, would you like to do this? So um, I don't know if I'll do that more in the future. Maybe. I think a lot of people like that. Best player you've played against? Well, I've played against a lot of players that are really good. I mean, I've played against, you know, Albert Pujols. I've played against... I played against Ken Griffey Jr. at the very end of his career. Played against, uh, you know, Josh Hamilton. I played against uh, Manny Ramirez. So I don't know who the best is, but I would say Manny Ramirez was the best player. When I was playing against him, I was like, wow, this guy is like, can't get this guy out. Jason, um, I didn't do a whole lot of partying today. No, I did not. Just did my normal thing. Is every pitcher in the MLB cheating? No, I wouldn't say every pitcher in the MLB is cheating. Are there some guys that are cheating? Yeah, sure, but I wouldn't say every pitcher is. How do they keep equipment in the dugout organized? Well, the only real equipment in the dugout, you're going to have your helmet in the helmet rack, but you have your number on the back of your helmet. You're going to have your bat 
in the bat rack. Um, but bats are pretty easy to know which one is yours. You, I would always put my number on the bottom of my bat, so I take a little marker and I just put a little number nine. Gloves are easy because, you know, there's only you know, nine gloves out there. I mean, there are guys on the bench, I guess, with gloves, but with your gloves, when you come off the field, you put your gloves together. So the infielders put their gloves together. The outfielders put their gloves together. So it's not that hard. Is it okay to get cut as a freshman at high school? I, I mean, are you saying like, are you ever going to be able to make the team if you got cut? Yeah, absolutely. I think players get better and some players get worse. And so I think you just got to keep working hard. I know plenty of people that got cut in high school that ended up being really good players. So thanks, Dusty. I used the 34 inch, 31 ounce bat. Ken Kevinetti, best arm, hands down. Yeah, I didn't play against Ken, but he did have a cannon. Um, yeah, I think he means Buffalo. Buffalo. I think he might be meaning Buffalo. Did you play with Sean Kazmar? And do you think he would make a career out of being a... And did you think he would make a career out of being a minor leaguer? I did play with Sean Kazmar. We were both called up in 2008 together. So, and I played with him in the minor leagues. And did I ever think he was going to get called up again? Uh, I would say, that, I would say probably not. I don't think I ever thought he would, especially after, I'm not saying uh, that I didn't think he'd get called up after 2008. I thought he could, but when he hadn't been called up in so long, you know, getting called up this year, I can't say I saw that one coming. Uh, have I ever played kickball? Yeah, plenty of times. Uh, Bruce Bochy is a great manager, yeah. I actually was drafted to the Padres when he was the manager. I didn't play for him. I got called up in 2008 when B Buddy Black was the manager, but I did get to meet Bruce Bochy um, when I got drafted, and uh, he has done a, good jo a great job, and then went to the Giants, obviously, and was great over there. Uh, Kumar or Lighter for the uh, number one pick? You know, I've seen both pitch, but I haven't really, like, zoned in on both. So um, I would have to do that more to give you a, a really good answer. Uh, how do you think the Giants will do? I feel like I've already answered this a couple times, but uh, I have no idea how they will do. I know they're doing really well right now. So Who would I rather hit a grand slam on, Randy Johnson or Pedro Martinez? Pedro, because he's my favorite pitcher ever. Do you coach a 15U travel baseball team? Uh, we have a 15U. I'm not the head coach of it, but we do have one. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are, am I that far? How far behind am I on? Whoa, I'm way behind on the chat. Wow, let me speed up here. Grant, thank you so much for Super Chat. I Is having two different fastballs a big plus for pitchers? Well, I think being able to add and subtract to pitches can be useful. So, you know, some players will add and subtract by having a fastball on a changeup or a fastball on a curveball, then a changeup or whatever. But being able to have, being able to add and subtract to just a fastball can help too. You know, being able to throw a four seamer and then being able to throw a two seamer that's a little bit slower, uh, has a little bit more movement. I think that, you know, yeah, it's a plus, I would say. A big plus, I mean, could be. What's a better, what's better? A nasty two seam and slider combo or a nasty four seam and change up combo? I've seen guys be really good with both, so I don't know which one's nastier. Um, I'd rather face probably a four seam change up guy because having one ball come in on my hands and then one ball sliding away is pretty tough. But again, like, I face some really good four seam change of guys too that are really hard to hit. So, hey Antonelli, you still keep in touch with Nikki Santa Barbara? Play with him in high school. Hope he's doing well. God bless. I do actually. I just uh, just text him a couple days ago actually. So, um, I'm planning on seeing him soon. I think I'm seeing him two in two weeks. Are you jealous minor league players get more rest with the new schedule? No, I'm not really jealous. I get a lot of rest now, so. 
But uh, I did think the schedule was a little crazy when I when I played, but. Uh, what are the best ways to truly gauge your skill? I think a lot of young guys get misguided about how good they are. Yeah, I think, listen, I think it's really hard. You never really know how good you are. Like, I never knew how good I was. Um, I mean, I got drafted and I never thought I was very good. So uh, it's really tough. And some people are the opposite. Some people stink and they think they're awesome. So, you know, it's hard. Um, I think especially now where like, Travel baseball has become so big and there's so many travel baseball teams and literally anyone can play travel baseball. And now sometimes people say like, I must be really good. I play travel baseball. Well, that's not exactly the case because everyone's playing now. Uh, so the, the best way to gauge it is you have to have somebody. This is how we do it. Um, you need to have someone that has seen players go on and play at a high level and then have that person look at you and see where you fit, like what's your skill level. So it's kind of, I do that for our organization. Um, so you gotta find someone like that and hopefully find someone that's not just gonna like tell you you're good just to make you feel, you know, feel good. It's tough always, it's tough a lot of times to find someone that's gonna really be honest with you. You know, and you can't ask like, you typically can't ask a family member, like mom and dad are probably gonna tell you you're awesome. And, and then there's some dads that will tell you you stink, even though, I mean, I have some dads that the, their kid is like awesome and they're like, oh, he stinks, he's terrible. He's oh my God, he, he only went four for five today. He should be five for five every game. And I'm like, no, 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 he's, he's really good. <laughs> like you, you shouldn't yell at him so much. Um, so it depends. EDG disc golf. How do I get my 11 year old son to stop hitting it over the fence and keep it in play so he can work on his base running? Um, that's a really good question. I'd probably just put a bunch of Evo Shield stuff on him. You know, two helmets, Evo Shield, elbow guard, uh, shin, shin guard. Maybe just wrap them in bubble tape and just tell them, to, tell them, don't give them a bat and then tell them to lean over the plate. He gets hit by enough pitches, he'll be able to get his base running in. Brian, thank you again for Super Chat. Do ball players shower after each game? What if you're not doing anything for the game, relievers or position players uh, in a two-hit game? So I showered after every game, no matter what. And I spent a lot of time on the bench, especially late in my career. So. Um, you got to think about it like, even if you're not playing, you're still stretching, you're still throwing, you're still, you know, if you're a bench player, like when I was on the bench, you know, when it got later in the game, I'm always, I'm getting loose. I'd go back and hit in the cages. So, you know, you're playing in the summer, so you're sweating, you're, you know, sometimes you're playing, it's like 90 degrees out and you're in pants, long socks, uh, you know, a heavy sh shirt. So a hat that... If you're like me, I like to wear the same hat all the time. So your hat's already like kind of gross. So yeah, I'm showering after every game. Wow, these questions are coming in fast, guys. What player needs to be the fastest? Shortstop or center field? The fastest, center field. The quickest, probably shortstop. Uh, what was my experience in the Cape Cod League? I love the Cape Cod League. It was a great league, a uh, great experience for me. So I enjoyed playing there. I had a great host family. It's really a cool league. You know, you get the, you play on kind of like these small parks usually where, um, you know, the fans are like right up on you. Almost feels like high school parks, a lot of them. So, and you're playing great baseball. A lot of good players in that. Uh, we are in Massachusetts. Mike W, thank you for Super Chat. Matt, can you tell my wife, Sherry, that watching baseball videos on YouTube on Memorial Day is productive? Um, yeah, I would say watching baseball videos on YouTube are, is always productive. Uh, my wife, uh, Lara, would, would probably agree with Sherry that it's not, but um, I keep telling her it is. And um, she says I'm an idiot and I say, well, that's fine. I'll be an idiot that watches YouTube videos 365 days a year, so. Uh, 
Uh, I have faced a knuckleball pitcher and have hit against them. Sorry, Sherry. Do I like machine pitch or coach pitch for young kids? I've never seen machine pitch before. We don't, I don't think we do that. I don't know if we do that in our state, but we don't do that wherever I've lived. So my son plays coach pitch and, uh, and I really like coach pitch. Um, at least his coach, like they, he gets on a knee and he puts it in there every time. Like, I don't think I've ever seen my son take a pitch in coach pitch because everything is pretty much right there. But again, I don't want to say machine pitch is bad. I've never really, I just, we don't have that here. CSU grad 2005, what's up? Long time, no chat. Matt, what's going on? First off, how many times are you going to say the word raking this evening? Um, probably a lot. I like to say the word raking. I don't say the guy hits well, a uh, guy, you know, swings a good bat or I don't know what I, the guy rakes. That's all you say. Second, what are your thoughts on the college baseball playoffs this season? So I, um, I watched the selection show. Is that what they call it today? And I'm, I say that I'm pumped up for it. The tough part for me, I've told you guys this before is like, um, this is my busy season for baseball as well. I'm coaching every weekend, multiple games. I'm running practices throughout the week. I've got lessons and we've got all this stuff going on. And so uh, I miss a lot of games, uh, a lot of major league games, a lot of college games. It's hard for me to watch. Like every year, like college season starts. I'm like, oh my, I can't wait to get into this college season. I watch like the first day or two and then I have so much baseball of my own, you know. Oh, and also I'm going to my son's games. Like then all of a sudden, the year goes by and I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't watch college baseball this season. Canes, Pero, 12 year out of North Carolina. I mean, you've heard of the Canes. Um, is that Matt Pero? Which Pero is that? Bunting, love it, hate it. I like a bunting for a hit. I do like that. I'm not big on sack bunts. I do think there are certain situations you can sack bunt. I don't wanna say that I'm totally against sack bunting, but. Um, in general, I'm not for just giving away outs. What fundamentals are missing the most from MILB and MLB today? Uh, fundamentals. Um, I guess it depends on what you call a fundamental. Like, is, is small ball less a part of a game now? Yes, like you're not gonna see bunting. You're not even gonna see as much situational hitting as you did, like even when I played, like we, there was a lot of, and, and I'm sure people that played before me would say that we didn't do it very well, but there was more of like, you know, bunting, sack bunting, bunting for hits, you know, man on second, hit a ground ball on the right side, move them over, hit and runs, like that stuff was still in the game. You don't see any of that stuff very much anymore. So that's probably the biggest thing that's changed. I'm going to try to catch up real quick in these chats. I'm going to scroll down because there's like, it's like a million. Of, yes, Matt Perro. Matt Perro that played at Wake Forest. Is that the same Matt Perro? I did see that. I did see Pujols get robbed that home run. That was crazy. Ah, yeah. I coached Matt Perro at Wake Forest. How did the size of your bat change through your baseball career? Uh, I used a 33 inch in high school and then I used a 34 inch in college and in pro ball. So that's pretty much how it changed. Um, what is the best advice you can give to a young athlete who's trying to lift but not get sore for games? In my experience, you wanna lower the reps and you can even increase the weight. So where I got most sore and where I still do today, like I'm sore right now because I worked out yesterday, if I go anywhere in like the eight to 12 rep range and I'm doing sets of like say three, uh, I'm gonna get sore probably. Um, but what I did in Baltimore, tell Matt I said hello. Um, what I did in Baltimore is I started doing uh, less reps and higher weight. So I'd go in and do four reps max and uh, I would just do heavy weight and I get much less sore. So that's my biggest advice. Like the volume of work has to come down but like the intensity and the weight can stay up. Like you can go really heavy and hard for four reps done. Instead of going lighter, rep, sometimes people think like, oh, I'll go lighter weight, but then I can do more reps, then you get more sore. 
What would I consider a fast pitch in high school? A varsity level, you're saying? I know in our area, it depends on what area you're from. In Massachusetts, I would say once a pitcher in high school starts throwing 85 or above, it starts to get pretty fast for guys. Um, so that's usually kind of the, the number. In our area, like the average high school pitcher is probably going to be like 78. That might not even be the average. It depends on what league you're in. Like if you're in a small league in Massachusetts, like it might be less than that. When you when will you debut as a closing pitcher? Well, Jeffrey, I'm getting close. I'm getting the arm ready still, trying to get back in the shape first. But I plan on closing this summer. Okay, I'll be ready to go. What's your team's record so far this season? Well, we have lots of teams. I coach our uh, uh, I coach our 11U team. I think we're 15 and five or 16 and five, something like that right now. Uh, we are coming to Georgia this summer. My team, I coach our 17 year old team. We will be in Georgia. Can you make a video about your baseball as a child growing up? Um, I referenced my childhood a lot in my videos. I don't know if I have a single video that's like, this is what baseball is like as a child, but I talk about it a lot, but yeah, sure I will. Do I know Chris Paul? So Chris Paul and I were the same grade at Wake Forest, uh, but I actually never saw him on campus once. <laughs> Beats 21, thank you so much for Super Chat. What's one thing you know now that you wish you knew at the beginning of your career? I would say uh, just having a better understanding of, of my swing and what I was trying to do and how to do it. Like basically, I think a huge skill is understanding your swing. Like when I played and got drafted, I really didn't know anything that I did in my swing. I just always just swung the bat and I hit the ball. Then there came a time in my career where I didn't and then I didn't know how to fix anything because I was like, I don't know what I do. And a lot of the advice you get as a kid, the, the, the advice I get like my whole life, I didn't get a whole lot of advice because I always was like one of the better hitters. So no one really told me anything. Um, you know, and... The few times in my life where I wasn't, wasn't hitting, what are you told, you're told, you know, uh, stay on top of the ball, hit the inside of the ball, like stuff that like my grandmother could tell me. Um, but when I struggled in 2008 with my swing for the first time in my life, I had no idea what to do. And, you know, people were still like, hey, stay on top of the ball. Hey, stay inside the ball. And I was like, like yeah, I'm trying that, but uh, I don't, that's not helping me. So understanding your swing and what you're doing, I think is a, is a, Understanding just a swing in general is really important. Hi, Luca. Is uh, Otani the best hitting pitcher? Uh, yes. Not hating, but it's tough to throw a 90 plus. Keep trying. Um, no, I know you're not hating. I am going to keep trying. I've thrown nine. I've thrown over 90 in my life. So uh, I know it's possible. But again, I did it when I was uh, playing baseball every day and training hard. So. Um, now I eat potato chips on my sofa. So we definitely have a long ways to go. And I'm also trying to do it again without dedicating my whole life to baseball. Like when I was playing baseball, I dedicated my whole day to baseball. Not, no, that's not saying I trained all day long. I'm just saying the most important thing in my life at that time was to be the best at baseball I could be. Uh, that is not the most important thing in my life right now. Um, I have my family, I have kids, a wife, um, I have a, a business, I have, you know, all these other things in my life now that are probably more important than me trying to throw 90 miles an hour again, so. But I'm still gonna do it. Brian, thank you so much for Super Chat. Did you ever cry as an adult about baseball, your team, players, etc., or something related to baseball? I heard there's no crying in baseball. No, I think there is crying in baseball. Like I wouldn't, I'm, um, I've seen plenty of people cry in baseball. I'm trying to think if I ever cried as an adult in baseball. Uh, I don't think I have. Um, I don't think I've ever cried. I would say the closest I came to crying as an adult in baseball was probably in 2012 with the Baltimore Orioles. I was sent to AAA. I was struggling and then I stopped. They didn't play me very much. And um, it's probably the first time where I really thought my baseball career was about to end. I, I vividly remember it. They had me DHing, which I hated DHing. And uh, I just couldn't hit and I kept popping up. And then I, I popped up like for the 57th time of the week. And 
I was DHing, so I'd have to play a field. I just left the field. I walked up to the batting cage and I just started taking baseballs and I started throwing the balls as hard as I could for no reason. I don't know why. I was just throwing baseballs as hard as I could. I felt like my arm was going to fall off. And uh, I didn't cry outside, but I was crying inside. Did I ever get annoyed by reporters? No, no one really ever wanted to talk to me enough to annoy me. I played in San Diego where there was like two reporters in the, in the clubhouse. How much does it hurt to get nailed by a 91 hour fastball? It just depends on where you get hit. You know, you get hit on like the funny bone right here or you get hit in like the knee or, you know, some place bony, it's gonna hurt. You get hit in like the tricep or something, it's not gonna hurt too bad. <laughs> you think Ben Gelman is in somewhere in my house right now, yeah. He's probably going through my, uh, never mind. <laughs> my clothes drawer, we'll say that. Did I ever feel intimidated by other players? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I think when you, when you get to the major leagues, you, uh, no, maybe not everybody, but I was definitely somewhat intimidated by people, right? You, you know, you're a young kid. I think I was, what, I just turned 23 when I made my debut. And uh, you're playing with some 38-year-olds and 40-year-olds and 35-year-olds and guys who've been in the major leagues a long time. And and one thing about the major leagues I have always felt is that, um, not that my team was like really bad about this, but I do think uh, one thing about the major leagues is um, sometimes older players and co even coaches sometimes, like they want to make you they want to make you feel like you are not in the minors anymore. Like this is the big league son. Like you'll hear like stuff like that. I always thought it was weird because one thing that I always did, uh, this is not just a major league thing. Like anyone out there that's played varsity baseball, varsity sports as a young player, or um, I guess you could really, it's probably any level, right? If you've, if you've played with older players, you know, like when I played varsity, I played varsity as a freshman. Um, I ended up get playing varsity in uh, the three sports I played. In almost all the sports, uh, especially football, you know, like the seniors, they did not make it very comfortable for me. I've told this story. I walked into the huddle the first time as a varsity player, as a freshman, and like the kids like tried to make me feel not part of the team. Uh, my approach always was to try to make the young kids feel very comfortable because I did not feel comfortable as a young player. So. I went out of my way when I was a, a senior in high school, like to talk a lot to the young kids. And, um, and that's how I played as an older player too. Oh, like in the main, like when I was in, I was never in the major leagues as an old player, but anytime a younger player came through, like maybe I was in AAA and I was considered a veteran at that time. Like I try to make the young players feel, uh, I've tried to make them feel more welcome. And so, but you don't get that at the major league level. I've heard a lot of players talk about this. They almost try to make you feel uncomfortable. They'll say like things like, you know, you should be seen and not heard. Like, so they try to get you to not act like yourself. And I always thought that was silly. I think you should, they should try to make you feel more like you can act like yourself. And then maybe they are now, but I don't think they did back in the day. And way back in the day, they really didn't make you, I've, again, I've, I don't have the experience way back in the day, but I've talked to people that have, so. Uh, what was my career backup plan? I didn't really have a career backup plan except maybe coach, except coaching. Um, when will you do stand up? And will it be baseball related? I don't think I'm ever doing stand up. What does it feel like at the plate when a pitcher throws a 90 plus mile per hour fastball up and in? Um, I'm trying, I'm just trying to go back and think of some times where a ball was thrown really hard up and in, you know, what I, I think I've said this earlier today or a few times, like I've never, ever been in the box fearful of getting hit by a ball. Um, maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know, but I, I never was in there and like, oh man, like don't dig in here. You know, like I just never thought that. I just the ball was thrown at me. I get hit and go to first base. So, um, 
it, it honestly, it never really bothered me. Now, I've been hit plenty of times and been like, oh, that's the worst pain of my life. And I try to run down the first baseline. I've run down the first baseline a lot, you know, because if you watch me, if you ever watch me get hit, I get hit and I get down the line real fast. I was totally against. I never in my life been hit with a ball and been like, and sat in the bash box. Now, I've been crying inside and been hit by a ball and literally crying inside, but I run down the line. And I'll get down the line and inside I'm going, oh, I can't breathe, but I never ever will stand in the batter's box after getting hit by the ball. Hey, thanks, Socrates. Could everyone give the video a like real quick so we can get up to over 100 likes? We were getting close, I think, in the other video, and then I got cut off because Laura called me, but I think we can get up to 100 real fast if everybody smashes the like button, as they say. Look at that. We're already going to be over 100. Just need a couple more. There we go. Thanks, everyone. Well, will you remember me when I become the ace pitcher of the Red Sox? Um, what's a double header like? It depends on the level that you're at. If you're looking at pro ball, I mean, usually in pro ball, I never, I never played a major league double header actually, but in the minor leagues, literally, like you play the game, you'd finish the game, you go back in the clubhouse, you'd eat really quick, and you come back out and play another game. So. Nothing crazy. What do I think about five to seven year olds traveling or weekend tournaments? Uh, I've never heard of that before. My son's six, he plays coach pitch. <laughs> he says, yeah, there's no travel coach pitch tournaments. So, um, I don't know. Fans on, uh, st thoughts on fans heckling you stories. Yeah, I've had a lot of fans heckle me, especially when you're not doing well, you know, in 2008, like I heard every stadium I went to, including my home stadium, I heard all the time. You know, one time in 2008, I was hitting like 160. So, you know, it was every time you get up, your number, your average gets flashed and you hear, nice batting average. Guy can't even hit his weight. Like you hear that every night in the stadium. So, um, I mean, it's not fun to hear that, but you do hear it all the time. What is the dugout atmosphere like? Was there lots of talking or was it more quiet? Quiet. Uh, it really depends on, it depends on the team you're on. I've played on some teams where there's like tons of energy in the dugout. I've played on some teams where it's more quiet. Um, I would say overall, it's not like your typical, I think when you think of like little league or travel ball or high school, you know, where it's like, come on, Johnny, come on, Johnny, here we go, Johnny, hey, nice swing, Johnny, you know, like that kind of talk. You don't really hear that at all. Like most of it is just kind of sitting there. And if you do something well, someone will say something, but they're not going to be cheering you on. Uh, clubhouse issues, it's hard to say. You know, like it, it's an interesting thing when you talk about teams and clubhouses and how teams, you know, team chemistry and that stuff. You'll always hear teams that win, they'll always say like, oh, you know, like it's just, we've had so much fun this year and the guys have been great and the clubhouse is awesome and all that stuff. Like, I do think some of that is when you're winning, things are fun. When you're not winning, things aren't as fun. When you're winning, people are in a good mood. When you're not winning, people aren't in a good mood. So like, you know, I've had plenty of examples where we've, because, you know, the season a lot of times like a roller coaster, you're up and down. And so, you know, you're losing and the team is just miserable and, you know, it's not that fun. And then all of a sudden you go on a big win streak and things are great. So it just depends on when you ask me, like, how's the clubhouse atmosphere? Well, we suck. Like, you know, it's not very fun. Um, you know, how's the clubhouse atmosphere now? When you're winning 20, oh, it's, it's awesome. We love each other. You know, we're all brothers, you know, so it's like. Um, and the, and the manager sometimes can kind of help or not help with that. So like, I've been on teams where, you know, we'll be in a, on a losing streak and you know, you're, so basically when you play a game, usually when you win, you come in, you turn the music on, music's real loud in the clubhouse, guys are dancing around and, you know, all happy and everything. And then when you lose, you don't, you don't turn the music on. And so I've had some managers that come in after losing and they'll be like, hey, what are we doing? Like, that's a good game. Like, turn the music on and put the music on and guys will feel a little bit better. Um, 
I've had some managers that have come in and we're on a losing streak and there's music on. Um, and the manager would start screaming at everyone to shut the music off. Or, you know, I had a manager one time that, that told us no more playing cards before the game because guys would sit around. Everyone usually plays cards, you know, like, like playing cards was the reason we were losing. So, um, I don't, I kind of got off subject there. The best play I ever made was um, probably in the Cape Cod League. I have a video on it. Um, I think it's entitled The Best Player Ever Made. Player parents, do's and don'ts. Um, I would keep it real simple. Like we could probably get into a big list, but I think as a parent, for me, um, I would say, um, I would say like cheer for the team, cheer for your, your son or your daughter. And um, that's pretty much it. Say good job after the game. And, you know, <laughs> that's about it. That's what I try to do as a parent, at least. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of things that really bother me about parents. But I will say like, you know, as a coach, like when parents start to try to coach their son or their daughter during the game, like, um, you know, that will aggravate me at times because it's like I'm trying to say one thing and then parents, you know, and then the kid's always looking in the stands. It's like, you know, if you want to coach the team, then go play Little League and try to be a coach in the team. But I always felt like if you put your son on a team where, you know, like you play, say you're playing anti baseball, right? Like you're paying us to coach him. So stop trying to coach him. Um, like trust that we're doing a good job coaching him. So, you know, not that that happens a lot. It happens every now and then. And then, like, there's a lot of don'ts. Like, I've seen parents screaming at umpires before. Not a lot of our parents. because So I send something out at the beginning of the year, basically says, this is uh, basically the, the parent do's and don'ts. Don't do this stuff. And then um, if I see it, well, I, I address it with the parent or I'll send them a message and say, like, uh, yeah, we don't do that. If they keep it up, then I just say, hey, if you keep doing it, you're not going to be with the program anymore. And then I've had some parents that we've just said we're not taking the player back because the parent's a knucklehead. And I <laughs> don't like the uh, environment that they create. So Tom August, thank you so much for Super Chat. Like, I've had, oh, sorry, to go back on this again. I mean, I've seen parents like yelling at their kids, yelling at other kids. Like, uh, and again, not, I'm not saying our parents. Like, we played a team this year where literally – the parents were screaming at the coach, at the third base coach, screaming at the third base coach for what the, the decisions they were making during the game. And uh, I literally said to the coach, I'm like, how are you, like, how are you allowing this to happen? Like after the game, I'd literally be like, uh, you, you're out of here. Don't come back to the game again and take your son with you. Cause like, I, I'm not dealing with that. If a parent's screaming at me the whole game of everything I'm doing. Tom August, thank you so much for Super Chat. What's your thoughts on holding runners at second base? All I see is 12 U kids is running back and forth from short sub to second to cover bag. I hate seeing that, but it's common. Uh, the two biggest things I see, Tom, that I don't like, the first thing and the biggest thing I see is um, straddling the bag and just standing there, almost like they're a first baseman holding the runner on at second. That's terrible. You're giving the, the hitter the entire field, basically, a hit. That's the first boo-boo I see. The next biggest thing I see, please, please, I'm even going to tell you this if we play against you. Like, if there's a runner on first and second, don't hold the runner at first. Why are we holding the runner at first? I see that every weekend. Every weekend at 11U that I play, I see it. It's unbelievable. I don't understand it. Have you ever watched a college or pro game or even a high school game? If you have, you will never see the first baseman holding the runner on first when there's runners on first and second. I saw the most egregious thing I ever saw and I felt bad for the other team. This was a few weeks ago. We had bases loaded. The first baseman was holding the runner at first. The second baseman was holding the runner at second. And I'm talking about straddling the bag. And the third baseman was straddling the bag, holding the runner at third. They had one defender playing in the field. I'm sitting there, I'm like, can coach, can you please look out? Does this sound like a sound, does this seem right? We're gonna put all of our defenders at a base and not cover any part of the field. Like literally we can hit the ball anywhere we want and get a hit. 
Like, there's been a lot of games this year at 11U when I'm coaching that, like, we might not even be better than the other team, but we'll win games by, like, a lot sometimes just based on the stupidity of, like, that type of stuff. So don't let that happen. Sorry, Tom, I'm, going, I'm getting off subject here. But the other thing I see is what you said. It is what we call, what I would call eyewash, right? Second baseman runs in, runs out. Shortstop runs in, runs out. Second baseman runs in, runs out. I'm like, dude, gee, like, and I'm just sitting there and half the time I'm like, you're good, you're good. Like, we just keep getting off because it's all eyewash. It's not even real. So the way you hold a runner on is you just have one guy. If it's a righty up, it's your second baseman. If it's a lefty, it's your shortstop. Unless you feel like the guy's going to hit the ball the other way more than he's going to pull it. If it's a shortstop, you just stand like a few feet behind the runner. And you're in, I have videos on this on YouTube. You can go check it out. You stand behind the runner. And from right there, you can either pick if you want or you can retreat to your position. And the, and the third base coach can't say you're good because I could put the pick on at any moment. Right? And so then all you do is you call it daylight. You just break in, put your glove out, and we spin and throw. Or you back out and the pitcher delivers the ball to the plate. That's all you have to do. Right? So that's it. But man, I've seen some crazy stuff. And then I'll see, this is the worst one. It'll, we'll, we'll be playing and we're on defense. And we'll have, the other team will be first and second. And, a, and I don't have my first baseman holding because I've watched baseball before. So I have the first baseman playing behind the runner. And the other coach and the other team will start screaming at the guy in the first, get off the bat, get off, get off, they're not holding, you're not holding. And then the first baseman will kind of look over and he'll start to go hold. And I'll scream, stop, we do not hold runners at first base with first and second. And then he'll go back to his normal spot. And the coach, the next inning, when, when now we have first and second, they go right back to holding again. I'm like, I so anyways, sorry, sorry for that rant right there. Uh, Broods, thank you so much for the super chat. I've seen Trevor Bauer throwing his disgusting gangster curve. Do you think that it is good Mitch to throw on a, oh, good pitch to throw on a 14 year team or just a normal cur curve? Um, I've never seen what his disgusting gangster curve looks like. I'm not really sure what he, what does he do? Does he spike a finger or something? So um, is it a dis gangster disgusting curve just because it's a really good curve or does he do something special? I'm not sure. Um, but I would work on just throwing a, a curveball and, and, and then hopefully throwing it good enough to make it a gangster disgusting curve. Do I like baseball? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. EJ Slump, speaking of crying in baseball, I recommend visiting, what is that, Bose, Bose Field? Where the movie was filmed, it opened in 1915 and only Fenway and Wrigley are older. Really, I don't even know. Clearly, I don't know my history. Uh, hey, Matt, how come Otani doesn't hit on days he pitches? Uh, I'm a, has he not hit at all on days he pitches? Uh, I'm assuming it's probably just to allow him to focus on pitching. And Listen, I think the biggest thing when you're pitching and you're hitting like he does, which no one else really can do, is it's a lot of wear and tear in your body. It's a lot of work to be able to do that, right? Just think about, think about being a starting pitcher, how tough it is for them to take the mound every five days. Like, that's difficult. But then you're going to ask them to, to do that, to take the mound every five days and then also hit every day. Like, that's really hard. So thanks, Carter. Would you coach at the MLB level? Um, I mean, yeah, probably. I've been offered jobs in the minor league level, which would then allow me to work my way to the major league level. I've not taken any of those jobs. So maybe, uh, maybe I would at some point. Uh, first and third strategy or plays. Depends how old the kids are. I keep it very simple for our age. We basically have two plays. We're either gonna come up throwing the guy out at uh, still in second, or we're gonna, so basically it's either priority is the runner at first or priority is runner at third. If priority is the runner at first, we're throwing him out. If priority is runner at third, the catcher has the option on that play to either come up, pump fake and look to third, or they just come up throwing a third. Um, we have, I also do give the pitcher the option on that play, and we, I don't usually do this, this is my first year coaching 11U baseball, and I always thought this was silly, um, but our catcher said, hey, he said one game, like, instead of the pump fake or the come to throw to third, if we put that play on, can I just come up and throw it back to the pitcher and they'll catch it and turn to third? And I was like, yeah, I really don't like that. I'm like, but, um, you know, I trusted the catcher, and I said, yeah, sure, go for it. 
So he comes up, throws to the pitcher, and literally the guy at third just breaks for the plate. Our pitcher catches the ball and throws it, and we get him out. And I'm just like, well, I guess at 11U, that play will work. <laughs> uh, sinkable soup. Thank you for the super chat. Have you played with or against Lastings Millage? Yep, played against Lastings Millage a good amount. Played against each other in high school. And then we played against each other um, in pro ball. So, um, yep, very good player. Great athlete. Great bat speed. Thanks, Stranger Danger. Great channel. I'm recovering from a back injury and I've been binge watching Matt's meteoric rise through the Rockies organization. Only problem is it hurts when I laugh. Um, well, thank you for watching it. And if you, uh, when you get done with that, if you go into Back to the Miners, Matt, which is the new um, road to the show, I feel like I get even, even more mad and, and um, I don't want to say it's funnier, but I think it's pretty good. Hidden ball tricks and trick plays are okay. Yeah, I would stay away from that mostly. I mean, I, I've seen it work. We don't run any of them. Um, so. Worth it to try to switch hit. Switch hitting is really hard. Um, you know, it's hard enough to hit one way, not never mind two ways. I would never tell a hitter, like, don't do it. Actually, that's a lie. I did tell a hitter one time because... They had a pretty good swing from one side of the plate and a horrendous swing, horrendous from the other side. And I was just like, dude, you can't hit from that side of the plate. And he was, he was a much better hitter. Like it, it wasn't even close. And they were trying to get recruited. And I was just like, dude, like if anyone sees you hit from that side of the plate, like, they're going to say this kid's the worst hitter I've ever seen. So how about we just don't hit from that side of the plate then? I think the Celtics are probably done. Matt, what's your confidence level of throwing 90 miles an hour at this point? On the mound? Um, pretty high, actually. I have a lot of confidence, and uh, that might be stupid, but I don't know why. I think I'm... Uh, I think I'm going to do it. It's going to take a while just to get my body back in shape, but I do think I will do it. Uh, ever get picked off? Yeah, I've been picked off. Um, not, I want to say plenty of times, but uh, the worst pickoff play that's happened to me is uh, I have two that stand out. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, first one was in college, playing against UNC Chapel Hill. Andrew Miller's on the mound, lefty. You guys know who he is. Plays for, who, I don't even know who the hell he plays for now. Cardinals, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Andrew, Miller's pitching, Andrew Miller's pitching. I hit a single. I get the first base or something. I get the first base. I don't remember if it was a single or a walk. And uh, our coach, first base coach, goes, hey, he's got a great step-off move, okay? Shorten up your lead. Be careful here. I said, okay. He comes set. He steps off, picks over, out. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, that was a good step off move. <laughs> Literally, the coach had just told me eight seconds prior to that. Um, like, if I was the coach now and I said that, I would have, you know, whacked the guy in the back of the helmet. Like, dude, I just told you that. So that was bad. And then, um, then my last year, this is basically what kind of probably ended my career. Um, my last year of playing pro ball in 2013, I wasn't playing very much. Uh, I get on first base uh, to, to pinch run, actually, I think it was. And Tony Singrani's pitching for the Reds. And uh, they say, uh, hey, he's got a really good Bach move. And I said, okay. So uh, he comes set. He lifts. He goes to the plate. And he picks the first. And I swear it's a Bach. But he told me it's a Bach move. And uh, I take my secondary. And I turn. I'm like, oh, shit. And I, they tag me out. And I'm like. And I go back, I'm like, that's a Bach. <laughs> it doesn't matter, they can call it Bach. Um, you know, and that's just me being stupid. And I think, I don't wanna make excuses, but I'm gonna make one right now. Not being, I was not mentally, this isn't even an excuse, this is blaming myself. I was not mentally into the game because I, I wasn't playing really very much at all and my head just wasn't into it. And so, like right now, I would be telling my guy like, hey, listen, He's got a Bach move, first of all, he's a lefty, so we're gonna take a late lead, right? So it's a one-way lead. It, it, it's, you can call it a one-way lead, I guess. But basically, I'm going back to the bag, right? I'm going back to the bag, 
and I'm waiting until I know the ball is thrown to the plate. So I tell our guys, like, the ball's got to cross his face, and you have to know it's going to the plate before you take your secondary lead. It's going to be a late secondary. And I always finish it up. Anytime there's a lefty on the mound, I always tell them. Some of them laugh at it, but I tell them, after I say all this, I say, and if you do get picked off, don't come back to the dugout. Just go out to your car and just sit there until the day's over. And uh, they all go, ha, ha, ha. And then I say, no, I'm serious. If you get picked off, just go to your car. And then they go, okay, I won't get picked off. And so far, we haven't had any 11-year-olds picked off against the lefty, so. Um, sinkable soup. Have you played with against Jesse Litsch? Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, thank you, Pandas are cool, for the super chat. There's no question there, though. Uh, how bad of a bonehead play was it in regards to the Pirates' first baseman in the Cubs game last week? An example of a low baseball IQ. So the first baseman is Will Craig. I coached Will Craig at Wake Forest um, when I coached there for a year. So um, it was, I, w I don't want to say it's a low IQ baseball play. I think it was just a brain kind of cramp fart, maybe not knowing the situation. So I would, I would say it's more than that, more like that. You know, I think he probably first, you know, the play happens. It doesn't happen a lot. Like first baseman's never going to get a run in a rundown between first and home, right? Like that almost that never happens. Um, you know, so he catches the ball. He goes to tag him. He goes, oh, he's right there. Oh, he's going to play a little game on me. Okay, I'll just kind of jog down and tag. Oh, he's backing up a little faster. Ha, 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 real funny. I'm going to come and tag you. And then all of a sudden... You see the guy starting to run home, and that's where his brain fart kind of happens, where he says, like, oh, no, I have to now either tag this guy quickly or throw the ball to home plate before he scores, not realizing it's a force out. I don't have to go quick at all. All I have to do is get the runner out before he gets to first base and the run doesn't score. So that's where, like, that play doesn't really ever happen, um, and it happens quickly, and I think he just kind of you know, panicked. I mean, even the catcher kind of panicked because you see the catcher catching and go to tag him real quick and doesn't get him. And then now he's, oh, shoot, I got to get the first. But now the second baseman's not covering first. So everyone kind of had to bring fire on the play. Um, sure, I'll try to do that for you, Ethan. Yeah, Louisville Slugger Soft Toss System. I have one of those too. I like them. Uh, I did watch some of the KBO stuff. Yeah, not a lot, but I did some. You know, I don't know, uh, Flyer fan. We had a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches back in the day, so apparently no one was allergic to it. Or they just didn't care. Uh, how do you eat good nutrition during long bus rides in the minors? You don't. <laughs> we had McDonald's and Taco Bell a lot. Hey, Matt, did you play against Aaron Bates with NC State? Anything memorable did you write? Oh, yeah, I know Aaron Bates really well. Um, got to know Aaron really well uh, in Cape Cod League at NC State in the minors when he was with who, the Red Sox. Uh, yeah, I knew Aaron really well. Big right-handed batter. Um, good hitter. Could really hit. But I liked, I liked Aaron a lot. Uh, sure. Uh, Margaret, I can do that. Is there such thing as a career minor leaguer? Uh, I do think there are such things as like organizational players that kind of just like the organization likes them, right? They maybe they're uh, you know a veteran player in the minors, probably not going to get called up, but you know they're almost like a coach on the field. They kind of fill in at certain spots. You've got your prospects, and then you know you've got your suspects, and you know he's. Yeah, I do think there is such a thing as that, yeah. Not a lot of them, but there are some guys. DeGrom's throwing 102 tonight. Did you ever play some pitcher of the three or hard? Not sure what that says, but uh, he is throwing hard, yeah. <laughs> Pan is a cool. Thank you for the super chat again. Do you think baseball should have more speed threats? Yeah, so... 
I think that the game has gone towards power, which we've talked about before. And the more you go th towards power, the more you go towards bigger, stronger dudes. And the more you go towards bigger, stronger dudes, the less quick and fast you are. Not always, but usually. So, you know, there's not a lot of Billy Hamiltons um, in the league as much as there used to be. So... Could there be more of them? Like, again, the game has gone in a different direction. Sports dudes, thank you for the super chat, but there is no question there. Uh, I don't play golf, no. Uh, Juan Pierre, yeah, that's a good example of a speed guy, yeah. Did any of your MLB teammates do drugs? Like steroid drugs or like recreational drugs? Oh, there you go. Um, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say yes. I don't remember um i don't remember seeing any guys uh do drugs but again i'm i'm sure maybe some of them did does your wrist hurt when it rains uh, i haven't noticed it hurts when it rains it just there's some random days where it really hurts um uh, but again i don't think it was when it rains yeah lacastro is very fast Yeah, it was not like the 80s Mets. No, no, it wasn't like that. Amphetamines. Um, so, you know, the, um, you know, like greenies back in the day, uh, what, what I saw players take was Adderall. Um, that was kind of like, I would say, the big drug of when I played. Um, lots of players would get, um, they would go and, and, I don't know what the test is called. Basically, it show that they have ADD even if they didn't, so they could then get, you know, Adderall. Did you ever face anyone that threw 102? Um, so Chapman pitched in a game against us, but I was on the bench, so I didn't face him. And uh, the hard, uh, yeah, I faced Daniel Bard, who threw, was throwing right around there. Chet, thank you so much for the super chat. It is not showing up here, the question, but thank you for the super chat. Matt, slow chat on, please. I don't even know how to do slow chat. People have told me to put slow chat on. I don't know how to do that. If anyone can tell me how to do it, I'll do it, but I don't know how. Yeah, everybody hit the like button, fellas, just like um, Nicholas said. Am I gonna apply for the LSU head baseball job? Pro probably not, should I? Would I change any rules to make the game better? Oh, I don't know if I change any rules. Ooh, I'm tired though. I gotta think about that. Oh, Bauer let up a two-run homer. Roll Tide Alabama baseball. Yeah, the umpire thing, why do they hold on to him? I don't know, personally. I'm not sure how the whole umpire thing worked. But there are definitely a few guys that don't seem very good. <laughs> what are all the minor league teams you've played for? Man, I've played for a lot of minor league teams. The organizations I've been with are Padres, Nationals, Orioles, Yankees, and Indians. And I've played in the minors at some point for all of those organizations. So I can't really name all the teams because I've, I've played in every level. GM of the Rockies? Go ahead, give me the job. I was watching the Bruins until Lara kicked me out of the living room. Favorite current player? I got a lot of them. I mean, I love watching all of them. Acuna, Tatis, Trout. And, um, yeah, I, I could name tons of players. What workouts can you do to add more power to your swing? You know, I think for workouts, real simply, um, again, depending on what your if you're someone that hasn't really worked out a whole lot, then I would just do like the major lifts, you know, like a, a pull up or chin up, whatever you're going to call it, uh, some type of press, a deadlift, a squat, you know, an RDL. I would start with like the big exercises there and then do whatever the hell else you want. How was it to home run a cords? It was awesome. So it's awesome to home run anywhere. Uh, only 8 p.m. on the West Coast. Why the yawn? Maybe because I'm not on the West Coast. Why would you think I'm on the West Coast? Do I look like a West Coast type of person? What 
Oh, I missed some super chats here. Hold on, everybody. Keith, thank you so much for Super Chat. What's up, Matt? How you been? What American League MLB stadiums have you played at? Favorite one? So I haven't played a lot of MLB uh, major... Blah, 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 blah. I haven't played a lot of American League stadiums because I was in the National League. The only American League stadiums I've played at... I've played at Fenway Park, but not a major league game. It was a AAA game. I've played at the, the Tampa Bay Rays stadium, but that was in a workout, not a major league game. I've never played in a major league game at an American League park. Uh, I've been to Camden Yards, again, to work out, not to play in a major league game. So we'll just say Fenway Park was my favorite. Did any of your guys you coach get COVID-19? Um, over the last year or so, we've had a couple get uh, get COVID. Um we have about 200 kids in our organization. So I think a couple did. I think they got it at school. Hector, thank you for the super chat. What's up, man? Need some guidance. I was I was named this year NCBWA All Region, first team, Central Region, first team in an All American. Um All right, so what what uh guidance do you need? You're clearly doing very well, so. Um, what is NCBWA though? I don't even know what the hell that is. So I don't know how old you are. Um, so if you're in college, then, you know, just keep freaking raking or doing awesome. If you're in high school, then you have to go watch our recruiting. <laughs> Uh, playlist on our channel because it's going to tell you how to get recruited. But see if you can put it below what what league that is. I don't even know what league that is. Sherman, thank you so much for Super Chat. Super chat. Uh, were there any coaches you liked growing up? Were you able to play for any of them? Um, yeah, growing up, I liked uh, Terry Francona because he was a Red Sox manager and I was a Red Sox fan. Um trying to think about it. I would say probably Terry Francona. And I did get to play for Terry Fran Francona just for a little bit in spring training. I was with the Indians last year. And uh, I didn't really talk to him a whole lot. I remember my first game playing for the big league team in spring training. Uh, I was getting ready to get on deck. And uh, Terry was, well, Tito, as you call, as the players called him, um, I'm getting ready to get on deck and he kind of like looks over and he's like, hey, he's like, uh, you're Peabody guy, huh? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right. And that was the extent of me talking to him. Peabody is a town, it's a city in, in near Boston where I grew up. And uh, that was about it. All right, everyone, a few more and then I'm gonna go to bed. Thanks, Rich. What's your favorite part of MLB baseball? Pretty much everything. The travel's awesome, the food's awesome, the hotels are awesome, you get paid lots of money, you get to play on TV, you get to play in front of 40,000 fans, you get to play baseball for a living, you play at the best parks, you, um, well, I, you get the picture. Worst error I ever made in the field. Um, I have a video on it. It's against the Brewers. I got a, I was a cutoff man or a relay man, whatever you want to call it. And I threw it like 50 feet over the catcher's head. Here we go. NCBA, National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association. Oh. How do I feel about Jerry Kellenick? Um, so I haven't been watching him. I know what he was struggling. Last time I checked, he was hitting like 200. I, I like his swing. I've watched his swing, and I think his swing is good. But I have not watched really any of his at-bats. I saw his home run swing, so I'd have to watch him more. I don't know. Lindor has been struggling, clearly. So, again, I haven't watched his at-bats. I haven't really watched the Mets play, so I don't know. I mean, he's a great player, clearly not playing great. So I hope he busts out soon. I got his rookie card. I'd like for him to play a little better. 
Richard, thank you so much for the super chat. I work with a guy that played with you briefly in Syracuse, Adam Carr. He was a pitcher, converted from an outfield, I think. He's now an electrician in CA. Ah, very cool. Tom, I said hello. That's way back in the day. That was 2011. Oh, you sent me a DM. I'm not very good at getting back in my DMs because I get lots of those, but I like the universe of the age personally. Omar Vizquel is, you know, one of the greatest fielders ever. Uh, didn't hit great. Hit okay at times. So, I think he's probably borderline. Favorite shortstop you would want to roll two with? Well, Nomar was a huge... I was a huge fan of Nomar Garcia Parra as a kid. Um... Probably Ozzy Smith. Or, you know, I was a huge A-Rod fan when he was with Seattle and Texas. When he went to the Yankees, I didn't like him as much because I was a big Red Sox fan back in the day. Well, Matt covers second on road to the show. Well, someone told me you have to hit the triangle button, so I'm going to try that next time. But I would probably pick... Um, i either pick A-Rod from his younger days, um, but I'd probably pick Ozzy if I was just turning a double play. If you're saying I was going to play with a shortstop, I'd pick A-Rod. Um, but turning just a double play, I'll pick the Wizard. Doing great. How are you doing with everything? Uh, do I, did, I play with, uh, did I play against anyone that's really good now? Well, it's been a long time since I played in the major leagues. So most of the guys I played with are gone uh, or, or played against. Um, I mean, I played against Max Scherzer. He's still nasty. I played against Justin Verlander. He's pretty good. I played against Clayton Kershaw. He's you know still pretty good. Um, who else did I play against? It's still pretty good. Um, I played against Albert Pujols. He's kind of old now. Uh, I mean, I played with Francisco Lindor. I, I was with the Indians my last year, so I played with, like, Francisco Lindor, Roberto Perez, Jose Ramirez. Um, um, who else did I play with on that team? So I played with a lot of those guys. And then Huey LeBlanc, yeah. And then, uh, let's see, the year before I was with the Indians, I was with... Uh, Yankees, who did I play with the Yankees? A lot of those guys are kind of done. I was with Francisco Cervelli and uh, Don Patances. I was with, oh yeah, I played against Andrew Miller. He's still hanging on. Played against Daniel Barr. He's still hanging on. Uh, did I ever play against a rehab pitcher that was blowing everyone away? I mean, I played against some pretty good rehab pitchers. Played against Bartolo Colon. Played against Tim Hudson. Um, Jared Weaver was good rehabbing. Those are probably the main rehab guys I remember. Plyo weight bands. I'll try to put those up there for sure. Uh, so I played against Kershaw when he was a rookie. Uh, I played against Pujols when he was a stud, so... You know, what's it like? I think you're a little bit in, you know, when I played against guys like even Josh Hamilton, when I played against Josh Hamilton, I was like, shoot, I'm playing against Josh Hamilton right now. Like this guy is going to rip my face off if he hit, he hit me one of the hardest ground balls I ever fielded at second base. So I played against David Ortiz. Um, actually, I made three consecutive outs once uh, in an inning. Jacoby Ellsbury hit it to me, got him out. Then Dustin Pedroia grounded out to me, and then Ortiz did too. So that was, um, and I was a big Red Sox fan growing up, so that was fun. That was cool. Uh, Lou Ford, I don't think I have any um, stories about him. When do I stream? So I was on a roll of streaming every Sunday night, but... I do once a week, like I was gonna do Sunday night, but I was away in, Mar in uh, Delaware, so I, now I'm doing Monday night. Um, and there's some Sunday nights where I might just be tired or maybe my kids are like, 
you know, I'm having a hard time, like, they go to bed late or something, and then by the time I get down here, I'm too tired, so. Uh, yeah, if I was offered an MLB starter contract, I'd sign right now. Could everyone hit the uh, thumbs up button? Smash the like button? We gotta get over 200 likes. We only have 184. We need 200. I'm okay with the universe of the age rule, yep. Uh, I'm not a big Phillies fan. I don't not like them, but. Oh, there we go. We almost got 200 thumbs up. Thanks, Ben. Oh, we need two more. Uh, I don't know if I'll do an MLB The Show franchise mode this year. You know what I end up playing the most show, uh, MLB The Show is usually in like the fall because that's when my, that's the slowest time of the year for me. The busiest time of the year is right now. Hey, thanks, Jeffrey. Do you know a feeling that you can feel in the swing to stay connected in the swing? Um, that's a tough question, I guess. Uh, do I know the feeling that you can feel? I would, th so there's a lot of things that kind of have to happen in order to feel connected, as you say. Um, I would check out our videos on, on, just our hitting videos, go to our hitting playlist. I think that'll probably help you the most. Just give you a complete understanding of kind of at least my thoughts on the swing. Did you play Clemson during college? Yeah, every year we're in the ACC against them. When you send a video to a college coach for the first time, should it be in game highlights or skills video? I would do a skills video unless you have like really good game highlight stuff. Not everyone has game highlight stuff. Um, I'm not really a fan of any team. I'll watch the Red Sox because, you know, I'm from Bo the Boston area, but I've kind of not, I was a huge fan growing up and now I just kind of like baseball. I'd say most players are using maple bats, but there are some that use Ash still, yeah. All right, everyone, I'm gonna do one more question and then I'm going to go to bed because I am tired and I have a lot of baseball tomorrow. Who was the best college player you played with or against? Probably Ryan Braun. Um, there were, this is, this is the question I'll end with tonight. Um, so there was a lot of good players I played in college. Ryan Zimmerman, Ryan Zimmerman was very good, but he was he impressed me mostly defensively. He didn't hit a great uh, a, a lot against us, but he was a great third baseman in college. Um, Ryan Braun was probably the best hitter I played against. He was amazing. Uh, I went and watched everything he did. I watched him hit batting practice. He was great in bat. Like I literally sat in the dugout watching him at batting practice. He was just hitting balls, flicking them out of the park to the opposite field. So he's probably the best hitter. Uh, Matt Weeders was really, really impressive because Matt Weeders hit a home run lefty and then got up righty the next step bat, hit a home run righty. And then he came in, oh, and then he caught the whole game. And then in the ninth, he came in and closed and was throwing like 92. So he was super impressive. Um, Tyler Colvin had a huge junior year. He was really impressive that year. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Every year there was someone different. But playing in the ACC, like, you play against a lot of really good players. And then when I coached, I saw more. I, saw, I played against Trey Turner. Um, Trey Turner was a great college player, a great big league player. But RC from the NYC. We'll end with RC Super Chat. Thanks, RC. What's up, Matt? Hey, Laura. What's up, Chad? Football as well. For once, I can't think of any questions to ask, but want to show support. RC, you're always showing support. I appreciate your support, RC, and, uh, and everyone else's as well. So always the MVP to me, Matt. Thanks, Jeffrey, and you're welcome, Scott. All right, everyone, where's the disc golf guy? He's probably hanging up his six-year-old upside down, trying to stretch him out, trying to get him to be 6'5". Whoa, look at that. My head looks really red right now from this hat. Apparently, it's too tight on me. Um, all right, oh, I got to go get a stretch in because I got to throw 95 soon. Oh, well, I got to start with 90, but anyways, thank you everyone uh, for hanging out tonight and chatting, especially where I got kicked off of the first stream because Laura called me, but we finished up strong. So have a great night, everyone. Uh, I will probably be back chatting live probably Sunday night, but um, we'll see. Um, yeah, Sunday night probably. We have playoffs this weekend, so I'll go on Sunday night. All right. Thanks again, and we'll talk to everyone later.